<clears throat> I stepped through the doorway slowly and started to look for a free place. It turned out there were plenty today, so I got the chance to eat all alone. Uh, there was fish with mashed potatoes for dinner. What misfortune once again. I'll be left half hungry. And didn't we have fish for lunch? Is it a fish only day today? Don't know. Having pushed my plate with uh, fried seeds while they were away, I laid my head on my hands and closed my eyes. But soon somebody came up to the table. Boy, you're being constantly interrupted, aren't you? Hey, are you all right? I'm fine. I reply without changing my position. Just tired. Yeah, a little. That's bad. Flavia said it seriously. Of course. You remember what that we are going for the hike after the dinner, didn't you? Have you prepared everything? Hmm? What? Where? I opened my eyes and lifted my head up instantly. Lena was standing by Slavia. The hike? She was surprised. Well, this is news to me as well, so it's kind of new for me. Uh, you know. Then you know. No. I put my head down on the table and covered it with my hands. My goodness. <laughs> if only I could sink it to the ground right away. The girls remained silent. I was left alone with my thoughts for some time, and that was fine by me. Good lord. Maybe I could have sat that way until the end of dinner time. But the strong voice of Olga was heard from the opposite end of the canteen. Guys, to celebrate the miraculous rescue of our friend and comrade Sherrick, we baked this cake for you all. I lifted my head idly and looked towards the cap leader, but couldn't see anything beyond the pioneers' backs. I'm only seeing two people. A second, just a second. And uh, nothing about me. Nothing about me rescuing Sherrick or gathering ingredients for the cake. Uh, did she actually, uh, I could have sworn she thanked you for doing those things. Or maybe, well, maybe it kind of ran over your brain a little bit. I don't know. Sometimes you don't really always have to have somebody thank you for every single thing. Just sometimes people just ask you something, just do it. I don't know, kind of thing. As if that's how it ought to be. And somebody else came with you during the time when you went to look for sure, didn't they? Well, it would be wrong to expect anything else from our camp leader. Let's go. Or we won't get our share. Slavia smiled. Let's go. Lena agreed. Yeah, sure. I got up reluctantly and tagged along behind the girls. As we approached the crowd of pioneers, Olga was just putting the cake in the center of the table. And now... Oh, wow. What a scene. What in the world are you doing back there? This see, um, I don't know about this view right here. It's like, um, Oyana's going for a cake, and I'm guessing, this, uh, but if you see the way she's positioned, if you imagine something else here, I don't know, it's like, uh, you'd forget that that's the camp leader, right? Uh, Natsu Yada there. It looks like they're doing something else, right? But it's more like she's struggling to get to the cake. I don't know. Just made me think of something else, though. The camp leader wasn't able to finish as Yada rushed out from the crowd, uh, pioneer crowd and dived into the cake. Yeah, I could imagine she would do something like that. <laughs> Sebi, it looks like, is like, am I, am I gonna have to eat this? It's like, why am I here in the seats? Like, I don't know. The only one that's missing, I would say, is uh, Slavia. The only one not in the scene. It's kind of funny, though. She managed to nibble it a few times before she was pulled away. He was kicking and screaming. You're acting like it's this guy's birthday. But, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of interesting how they're doing this all for one person, though. But, I don't know. It's pretty funny, though. I wish somebody did something like that for me. You know, it's like, hey, you were fine when you... How many times, you know, we went with our parents somewhere, like maybe to some type of festival, right? Where you get lost once in a while, right? What happens when your parents usually end up finding you, usually? You get yelled at most of the time. There ain't no cake or some type of celebration going on. It's like, you're grounded for a day, for a week. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Something that came to mind. It's like, uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> I stare brightly from the outside of, at all this drama. I'm just a smiling leader picking up some uh, cream with her finger. All the furious pioneers around. And I'm gonna definitely have to break this up into two parts. I've been overplaying a little bit here. But either way, uh, I'll be uploading the one at a time. So you guys are getting here though. I'm like completely out of place here. I thought that if I close my eyes now and open them again, here I am back to the safety of my apartment in front of the computer. <laughs> Good boy. I blinked, but nothing changed. Only the noise and the confusion became sharper. Oh, Yana, that's the limit. I. I just. Well, in fact, the agent like this is a bit over the top even for her. Sure, it's broken to the conversation, or is it a court martial? My goodness. Please, Olga. Since the cake is celebrating my return, it's no big deal. He hesitated. It doesn't matter. The camp leader turned to Oleana. And you. Today, I'm going to punish you to the fullest extent, so you'll be ahead next time. My goodness, man. It's like... I mean, you're, what, a few years older than, um, uh, Sebian. I don't know. Some of that, I would say, you know, not chill out with some of that. You know, yeah, okay, you don't really need to dive into the cake, but I mean, I don't know. She's kind of like the only kid in this entire camp, I don't know. Which is why I say, when, by doing her route, it's going to be a little bit awkward. But she has those type of seeds in it, but, yeah. Uh, but, I don't know. Like, how is that going to work? <laughs> it's like, uh... Ah, whatever. She snorted and turned back. You won't be going on a hike with us tonight. My goodness. As if I wanted to. You probably did, but it's like, you know. I was more than willing to switch places with Ayana and stop the hike instead of her, but he knew. If I had guessed beforehand, I'd have been the first one to go berserk and smash the damn cake. Oh, jeez. After a couple of minutes of confusion, the pioneers started to disperse. You have to get ready, too. There'll be a lineup at the square in half an hour. I looked straight into the eyes of the camp leader, trying to express my attitude not verbally, but it seems that I failed. Don't be late. <laughs> Ayana was sitting at the table when I approached her on my way to the exit. So, why did you do it? She looked very upset. But she had a right to be so. I wanted to. Ayana replied abruptly. So, you're happy now? Of course I am. Why are you blushing? <laughs> and you. Uh, good luck with the uh, hiking. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mom mischievously uh, sprang up and rushed out of the canteen. Always something with her, you know. It's like plenty of energy, right? Well, a little bit of luck wouldn't hurt. Walking you shall reach is was exactly this proverb that kept whirling in my head all the way down to the camp leader's cabin. Somehow I just couldn't manage to argue to pretend that I'm sick or to just skip it without a reason. The events of this day taught me submissiveness. Hmm. Although sometimes whatever was happening made no sense to me. As I walked in, I had a thought. Well, in fact, how should I get ready? Clothes, I only have an overcoat and a pair of jeans. I forgot to ask whether it's going to be an overnight hike or not. I couldn't think of anything better, so I grabbed the sweater that I had on me when I arrived in the camp. The night-night be fairly chilly and shuffled uh, slowly off to the square. Hmm. All the camp was already there, although it was about ten minutes before the time over the each of had to sign. I settled down near the edge and waited patiently. Night was falling. If viewed from the outside, what a fairly comical picture we would make. A crowd of pioneers lined up out of a sheer habit, like they were awaiting a sound of command from the bronze gender. And all this happening in the scarlet rays of the sunset. And there he is, waving his hand and screaming attack as worried soldiers with red neckerchiefs charge into the battle against some ghostly enemy. But Olga showed up and started to talk instead of Gendry. Good, because I'm tired of looking at that damn statue. It seems everybody is here. Great. I was so tired today that I couldn't even think about anything, so I ended up just listening to the camp leader. 
Now, today we'll go hiking. It is essential for every pioneer to be able to come and rescue his comrade to help a helping hand in the hour of need, saving them from a helpless situation. They have to learn to do all these things together. A uh, whisper that ran through the pioneer crowd suggesting that most probably this truly epic expedition would end in a clearing in the forest several hundred feet away from the square. Somehow I thought so too. We're walking past. So, if you haven't chosen a partner for yourself yet, now's the time to do so. Pioneers quickly caught on to the idea and started the matching pairs. It looked like I was the only one without a partner. Who do you think you're gonna end up with? Slavia was enthusiastically discussing something with Olga. Lena was with Miku. Electronic was, of course, but sure. How is Lena stuck with Miku? How does that work? Like, that's gotta be kinda odd, right? Miku's kind of a talkative one, a little bit. Well, it might be not a bad idea to go alone after all. Senya, well, you won't be going after all long if you're giving me a choice. The voice of the camp leader pulled me out of my thoughts. I went up to her reluctantly. I see that you haven't found a partner. Seems like it. Then, you will join Zenya. She is alone too. What? I'm struck with that special kind of despair that only a true loner can experience. So it appears that I'm left with the prickly librarian that I wouldn't risk spending a couple of hours with even if I was paid for it. What? Although we both seem to be in the same boat now. Was my choice for, uh, Slavia? She's only approached Zenya. Well, I guess we'll be going together. She looked up at me. <laughs> Don't you even think that I'm glad? Probably are. But you're probably lying too at the same time, aren't you? Said Zenya seriously. Why on earth you should feel glad? I asked Naomi. Never mind. It would be much better if you just shut up. My goodness. Yeah, there you go. It's like... Which one of these girls is the Sunderay? It's like, is it is it Alyssa or is it Zenya? I'm gonna say Zenya's more the Sunderay and Alyssa's more the Cooteray. I don't know. It's the vibe that I get from a little bit of both. But I don't know. This girl doesn't really attack you though. That's the only thing I would say for it. So uh, Alyssa definitely has, you know, times with him, but nothing really has become of it though. If anything, she just kind of, she just gets that creepy eye, and that's usually it. Uh, she turned her back on me and followed the other pioneers. I still haven't seen any special reason to walk in Paris. Anyway, we were walking on the uh, well-trodden forest trails, and it would be quite difficult to get lost here, even if I wanted to. Moreover, while we'd already been hiking for half an hour, we weren't rushing into the depths of the forest, trying to face all the dangers that could test our courage and harden our pioneer spirits, but instead we are just walking around in circles. However, if we take into account that an Oga was our chief, this hike could be compared to a hobbit's march from the Shire to Mordor. My goodness. Your brain it really goes all over the place. Just as any insisted, I was following her at a distance in silence. The librarian seemed to be perfectly okay with it. Hey, don't you know when we'll reach our destination? Uh, what? <clears throat> uh, the place where we'll settle down and set up camp? The whole point of this hike isn't to set up a camp, but the hiking itself. You don't get it. Yeah, seeing that I didn't understand a thing about hiking. I guess you're right, but still. I don't know. <laughs> she replied sharply and quickened her pace. I caught up with her and asked. Listen, why are you always so... I was about to say mean, but stopped short. I haven't done anything bad to you, and I'm not going to. She glared at me in surprise. Always so... what? Well, unsociable, kind of. Or is it something about me? Honestly, if you met me in life, if me and if I knew somebody like that, I was never really like... A social chit chat chatterbox myself, you know. I don't know. It's not that I didn't really like. I was like really anti-social like that, but I also didn't really go around like you know, just randomly just hello, hey, you want to be friends, kind of thing. I don't know. It just didn't work that way. Although, I always say you know, it's one thing you can hear people talk up here, but it's another thing when it comes to real life. You just never know. It's like I don't know. 
I always just kind of kept to myself type thing. You know, with her, maybe it's she's kind of the same way. I don't know. But it could be you as well. Who knows, guy? Oh, cut that stupidity out already. My goodness. I don't know. Why couldn't you be a main heroine is what I want to know. Why do you have to be someone we have to beat the entire game to get a route out of To get something from you. It's like... Uh... Remember since this character showed up from the library the first moment you meet her, it's like, you get curious about her, right? And you can only do her after you do everything else. That includes Eula and all that and, you know, the main plot of the whole game. It's like, okay, you get this character, it's like, you could give me a route with her where something could come of that. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird how they do that. As you wish. <laughs> I decided not to start a conversation with her for the rest of the hike. Because I like most people where they don't like Sundarays. I'm kind of the opposite of that. They make me more curious about them than anything. Because I'm trying to figure out what's making her tick. You know, it's like, okay, what's going on with you? You know, last Olga decided to end this Savissi and toil. It's time to hope. I didn't even realize she was with them. The place uh, chosen turned out to be a uh, quite large glade with a few tree trunks laid in half circle to make an improvised uproar with the remains of a campfire in the middle. Obviously, such hikes are a tradition of this camp. I was set to gather firewood together with the other boys. It didn't take long because there were a lot of branches and logs of various sizes lying around. Eventually, Olga lit the fire using some more newspapers. I was eager to know what was written there, but couldn't discern anything other than Soviet symbols. Pioneers took their places on the fallen log benches and started to talk about things. It seems that the final goal of this event had been achieved. The only things missing were a pot of fish soup, aluminum cups of vodka, and a guitar. Wow. But I wouldn't be surprised if at all, uh, if these would appear somehow. What are you thinking about? Slavia. Huh. Slavia sat next to me. Oh, nothing special. Just enjoying the hike. I answered sarcastically. You don't look too happy. Well, I'm not about to jump the door. Sorry about that. Okay, I want to stab you. She sat with me for a while, but after realizing I wasn't in the mood of talking, she left uh, me to enjoy my introspection all alone. Um, all I wished for was to lie down in bed and fall asleep as soon as possible, but I was being surrounded by smoke and the useless chatter of pioneers around me instead. They were cheering and laughing and in general enjoying this warm summer evening. And the far side of the blade, I noticed that Lena was arguing with Alyssa and Tetsu. And Tetsu and Lena uh, seemed like complete opposites to me. Slavia had left to go somewhere after our conversation, it seems. Electronic and Shurik were trying furiously to prove something to Olga Dimitrinov. Looks like I'm the only one who doesn't belong here. Try to find out what Alyssa and Alina are arguing about, so that has more to do with them. Uh, to uh, what do we have here? Let me uh, make a quick save of this. Uh, what do we have? Okay, I think we are going to stay seated. Okay. All I was doing was just watching the fire. There is a saying that claims that one could watch it forever, as well as running water. But there was also some, uh, thing there. What was that? One could watch three things forever. Running fire, running water, and how other people work. The cab leader pulled me out of my day dreaming. Samuel, don't you think that it's too early to relax? Uh, what else would I need to do? I honestly couldn't get what Olga Dimitrinova wanted from me. I don't know. She stopped for a moment. But if there is something to be done, then do it without hesitation. <laughs> she smiled ambiguously and went back to the fire to threw a few branches on. After those words, I'm completely sure that she gives me like a personal slave. No, I don't really think that's it. She just scraped it. Or at least, I'm like a free labor source, which is, strictly speaking, the same thing. I sighed and put my head down on my hands. 
hoping my torments would be over for a day. Today, someone patted me on the shoulder. I looked up and saw Shurik and Electronic who sat next to me. What do you want? I asked Ivan. Don't be mad, sad. Is there anything better to do? Look, we've been discussing the possibilities for the advancement of the cybernetic sled with Olga. And there is a problem. We need more guys. If you could. He hesitated. Advancement and those guys are incompatible with each other. I said nothing and started to look over the pioneers around me instead. Well, I don't have time. Can't you see that I'm always busy with the camp leader's errands? Yeah, I guess you're right. It's kind of embarrassing how it all went today with Ileana. I looked at him with surprise. It seems that sure blamed himself for that cake accident. Yeah, it is. All the pioneers seem to be here, but I couldn't spot Sloppy anywhere. I think she is angry with me. Who? I asked absently. Ileana. Maybe I should apologize. No, it's not your fault. We sat silently for a while, and then I stood up and said, My legs are numb. I better take a walk. They made no reply. I made a few circles around our improvised camp, noticing the close looks of the camp leader following me. Looks like Olga couldn't wait to come up with some kind of new task for me. I haven't found Slavia anywhere. Maybe I should go and try to find her. On the other hand, I felt sorry for Ilyana every time I recalled her upset face. Maybe this hike isn't the most entertaining thing ever, but sitting there all alone isn't any better either. But at the same time, I didn't want to go anywhere. Okay, well, obviously, we're not going to remain seated because we don't even have a few other girls unlocked for me to even do that, the special routes anyway. To stay seated has, uh, one of them, I do remember, um, do recall, let me look in here, see what I got, because I just want to be on the safe side of this, uh, you know what, Miku doesn't even have a day five date, so I don't even know how that's going to go, but for, you know what, she doesn't either, that's kind of interesting, um, obviously, I don't really know what the one with Ayana does. Obviously, that's going to have to do with her. But, yeah, see, go to Ayana, okay, goes to Ayana's route. And then, the remain seated one, for some reason, I had assumed that would have to do with Eula or Miku. Uh, it has to play in one of their routes, because, um... Let me see. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, so Slavia is where we're gonna go, but I'm just I'm just mainly talking about this last choice down here. You know, so Slavia's route is the one we wanna try to get on to actually completely get on her route. Cause even though I mentioned in the second part where Slavia's route path, that's not exactly Slavia's route. You kind of build towards the route. That's pretty much what goes on. Okay, so let's select this and go from there. Ready to enter city where Slavia has gone. Though I also wanted to leave this place as fast as possible, and if not to finally lie down to sleep. Then at the very least to spend some time alone away from all these pioneers and Oga who just couldn't wait to occupy me with something again. I picked a good moment and fled into the forest. Night had fallen under the camp. An absolutely normal and unremarkable night. One of those nights when the dark sky, stars, or crescent moon don't trigger any special emotions. When the crickets chirping and the singing of night birds seem more like an everyday routine than a nocturnal of course. I wandered around the forest with no special purpose, trying not to get too far from the camp. After all, there was a chance to meet Oyana out there, and that natural disaster would probably be even worse than the camp leader. I sat down on a fallen tree and started thinking, why is this all happening to me? Why do I keep getting myself into full situations, every time and everywhere? Even having suddenly appeared at a weird pioneer camp in the middle of nowhere, I don't get to become a subject, an experiment, a victim of a sick cosmic mind, or a participant in an intergalactic war on the side of a group of suicide-prone pacifists, like a regular hero of science fiction. 
Now I get to hide in a night forest from our raving camp leader and her workforce pioneers. My goodness. Uh, stars in the sky were shining brightly. Perhaps they give their light not only to me in this camp, but also shine on the city where I was born and where my home, old home is. It was as if a pain uh, settled in my chest. Interesting. I envisioned my old flat clearly, and a detestable burning started making its way from my stomach to my throat. No, it was not wishfulness. More like a sad reminiscence. Because despite all that's happened, I felt more alive in less than five days here than I had for the last several years there. But now, I really wasn't sure if I wanted to get back. Probably because you're on a route. Only one question still ate at me. How and why I ended up here. Well, first choice in the very first point of the game. Ah, you got on a bus. The magic bus is what you got on. Transported you there, right? I don't know. It flared up yet again in my mind. But that will come in all due time, you know. I haven't spent much time seeking answers or even just thinking about my situation lately. And to be quite honest with you guys, I honestly think the four main girls have a better route than you. I'm just being honest. I don't know. It's just the way that I look at it anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, you kind of, you'll see what I'm talking about. You feel more bad for them than you will for Eula's route. Because it's like, okay, yeah. Because now you got, you solved the plot of the whole damn thing. But, you know, okay. It's like the other girls are kind of like swept aside for the main girl. It's like, okay, how do you do that? You know, I don't know. My thoughts were occupied with every day. Not that I don't, you know. I mean, she's kind of cool looking at everything. You know, the whole idea of whoop girl and everything, you know. Like a half looking uh, thing. But still, I don't know. I could come up with a better idea for a character. If you got to give me something like, make her more just like, well, that's what makes her interesting is she's different than everybody. Yeah, she is. But even Miku is not really what you would expect from her either, though. Now, in order to break away and be able to wish to stay here for good, I need to understand the nature of this place. It's just that even a nightingale in a golden cage has a right to know now how and by whose will he got in there. And after that, to make the choice whether to stay or not. Probably I would have been lost in my existence or thoughts for a long time, but I heard voices approaching. Ogata and the pioneers. Looks like they're proceeding with their hike. I headed to the camp at a fast pace. I have no desire to go back to the camp leader's cabin because I would surely be scolded and just waiting for it is much worse. Soon enough, I arrived at the beach and I wasn't alone here. Pioneer uniform was lying in the, on the sand. A girl's one. Who do you think it was? But no one seemed to be swimming in the water. I almost thought it was some new devilry when suddenly a voice came from behind me. Skipping out on the hike. Huh. You spoke too soon, didn't you? I thought you were still in the woods. Whoa! I turned around and saw Slobby in a bikini. Hello. We did not see this. Look, I mean, you like that other than the second day. Or maybe, yeah, I think it was. Maybe, no, it was, yeah, it was. Well, second part that I did anyway. I turned around and saw Slobby in a bikini. But technically, that was the first day also. Part of the first day, I should say. Sorry, I guess I interrupted you. That's okay. I'm almost done. Uh, why did you decide to leave, uh, have a swim during the night? Oh, well, is it prohibited? She smiled. Well, no. It's just... Won't, uh, Olga mind you leaving early? But you did the same. <laughs> Slavia gave me a quick glance. Yeah, I did. I sat down on the sand and stared at the river. You didn't like the hike, did you? No, it's not that. I just wanted to be alone for some time. And I've interrupted you. No, not really. That's not like you at all. What are you talking about? Well, uh, to leave like that. Well, I'm not a robot that can only act according to a predefined program. She laughed. Yeah, that's right. I was still puzzled and my fatigue was only becoming stronger and stronger. My mind was absolutely blank. 
to be precise, it was so heavy and full so that not even a single idea would have the chance to dwell there. If I would compare my brain at its prime to a broad highway full of speeding thoughts overtaking each other and causing giant chaotic crashes, then now it's nothing but a forgotten tiny path in a distant, desolate forest, which is only used in times of absolute necessity. So I said the first thing that crossed my mind. Don't you think it's all pretty strange here? Strange? Everything that happens here. It's the ideal model of a pioneer camp. Of course, it's not like I know a lot about them, but it looks exactly like I imagined it. What are you talking about? Slavia glanced at me perplexedly. Did you ever feel that you're not where you belong? I don't know. More precisely, not where you were meant to be at home. As if thousands of kilometers away from your home, or even in another galaxy. I don't understand you. We're similar in this. I lay down on my back and stared at the stars. Looked at the stars, I should say. And what would you think if I told you that I'm an alien from the future? My goodness, I probably would laugh at you. Ah, you. Yeah. That's lobby and that illness. Well, let's assume I am. How should I return to my time? Do you really want to? Yeah, all the conversations with her that have to do with my situation. Even the slightest hints of it always end up at the same place. It's like she's offering me a chance to stay. Almost insisting on it. Well, let's say that I'm not sure. There, as we could call it, uh, everything is like home to me. Or rather more familiar. Practically everything is known to me, and I'm prepared for any situation. And here it's the other way around. Literally every little thing comes as a surprise and everything's different. Is it really that bad? I wouldn't call it bad. Unfamiliar? Unclear? Sometimes it can be hard to change something, especially for people with my personality. But what do you really want? To start with, I can't answer that question until I find out exactly where here is. To go and go and find out. If only it was that easy. But what's so difficult about it? Everything's difficult. I don't even know where to start. And I'm constantly being distracted. You are talking about it so seriously. It's almost like it's all real. She laughed. Who knows? A pretty long silence followed. Suddenly, Slavia sneezed. Bless you. Thanks. It wasn't a good idea to swim at night. You could get ill. Where to your cabin? It's cold out here. That's nothing. I'd rather sit here with you a bit more. No, just let me dress. Well, I was certainly flattered, but... Let's go. I'll walk with you. But we didn't even walk a dozen steps before Slobby grasped my arm. Oh boy, where's this going? What's the matter? Oh, I suddenly felt dizzy. I touched her forehead. It was burning. I was never able to measure body temperature by touch, but in this case it was obvious. I told you. <clears throat> come on, come on. No, I could affect Xenia. What? In fact, listen, we better go to the infirmary. Uh, what would you do in the infirmary and not alone? That's nonsense. No, it's not nonsense. If you don't want to help, I'll go by myself. She let go of my hand and was ready to leave. Wow. Don't get upset. Put this on, it's cold. I handed her my sweater, which I brought with me on the hike. Finally, found some use for it, good boy. Thanks. She pulled the sweater on and gave me such a tender, caring look that I just couldn't argue with her anymore. Okay, fine. The infirmary it is this, I should say. Huh. Wow. Five minutes later, we were standing by the infirmary door and Slavia was picking out the right key. I was considered this idea quite foolish. Nobody ever died from the common cold. At least not in the past century. I could see any good reason to spend a night in the infirmary. Where do you think this is going? Is this going to lead into one of those kind of scenes? I don't know. <laughs> Finally, Slavia opened the door and leaned on my arm. 
I'm still a bit dizzy, she said guiltily. Slavia landed on the bed. I sat on the chair nearby. Still, listen, alone for the whole night in the infirmary. After all, at least Zenya could get you a glass of water if you needed one. She wouldn't catch the illness. She's young and strong. That's all right. I don't want to bother anyone, and the nurse will come tomorrow. I suddenly imagined myself at Slavia's place, imagined that I had to spend the whole night here alone. And shivers ran down my spine. Listen, maybe I could stay with you for a while. I owed a lot to Slavia. And in fact, I didn't even want to leave. What for? Everything will be fine. Thanks for walking me over. You should go and get some rest. I still think it's fine. For a moment I thought, of course nothing terrible will happen to her here, but I myself would feel more relaxed if I stayed with her. I think, oh, come on. Slavia cried out as if offended. You won't throw me out, will you? I smiled shyly. All right, but if you get infected, you only have yourself to blame. I was happy with my little victory. Okay, then, what shall we do? There should be some playing cards in the chest. Durak. In fact, I didn't know any other games except that one in poker. Okay. We spent a lot of time playing. And I don't know if this is going to lead into anything, but uh, I feel like this kind of calls for a part. And I've been playing for a while anyway, but uh, I'll be breaking these up into two parts. So you get the uh, one of the parts and then you get this one here. So till then, I will see you guys next time.